Hi, my name is Stefano, and welcome to ABTV News, where we discuss the world's latest political news. Here are the headlines for this week. North Korea test fires missiles in defiance of UN sanctions. Egypt court invalidates Red Sea Island's transfer to Saudi Arabia. A mystery explosion kills dozens of people in Libya. Yulin Dog Meat Festival begins in China amid widespread criticism. The government of India bans toxic red chemical. Let's get into the full stories. North Korea has test-fired two mid-range ballistic missiles within hours of each other in defiance toward UN sanctions, says South Korea. Military officials in South Korea have said both were powerful Musudan missiles. The first missile launch failed while the success of the second missile is still being analyzed. North Korea is banned by UN resolutions from any use of ballistic missile technology because of its nuclear weapons program, but four other missiles tested in the last two months have also been reported, with the missiles either exploding mid-air or crashing. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said if the latest test was confirmed to be of a ballistic missile, it clearly cannot be tolerated. Surrounding countries have detected preparations for a launch in the past few days and warned that if it was about to happen, Japan had also said it would shoot down the missile if it entered Japanese airspace for good reason, because the Musudan is believed to have a range of about 3,000 kilometers, or 1,800 miles, enough for it to hit South Korea, Japan, and the U.S. territory of Guam in the Western Pacific. An Egyptian judge has quashed a government decision to hand control of two Red Sea islands to Saudi Arabia. Egypt's president, Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, announced that the islands Tehran and Sanafir would be transferred in April during a visit by Saudi Arabia's King Salman. More than 150 people were jailed in connection with protests over the ordeal, though many were later acquitted or had their sentences reduced on appeal. The Egyptian government had said it will challenge Tuesday's ruling. Tehran and Sanafir are uninhabited and located at the mouth of the Gulf of Aqaba, a strategic part of the Red Sea border by Israel, Jordan, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. Mr. Sisi's decision in April to secede control of them to Saudi Arabia sparked widespread criticism. The president was accused of violating the constitution and selling the islands in return for a multi-billion dollar aid package unveiled by King Salman during his visit. But Mr. Sisi insisted that Tehran and Sanafir had always belonged to Saudi Arabia. On Tuesday, Egypt's state council and administrative court issued a verdict annulling April's maritime borders agreement between Cairo and Riyadh. The maritime border agreement signed earlier this year between Egypt and Saudi Arabia took many Egyptians by surprise. Since then, protesters have taken to the streets calling the arrangement unconstitutional and accusing the government of giving away Egyptian territories in return for aid packages and investments worth billions of dollars from Saudi Arabia, a strong backer of President Sisi. Some of these protesters were arrested and charged with disrupting public order. A few are still behind bars. The lawsuit was filed by a number of prominent human rights lawyers headed by a former presidential candidate, Khaled Ali. When the verdict was issued, many cheered inside the courtroom, chanting, the islands are Egyptian. But the legal battle has not come to an end yet because the decision can be appealed. The verdict stated that the two islands would remain under Egyptian sovereignty. If it is approved by the country's high administrative court, it will become legally binding. However, the state lawsuits authority, which represents the Egyptian state in lawsuits, said on Tuesday evening that it would challenge the ruling. State television reported, Mr. Sisi has cracked down on all dissent since leading the military's overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi in 2013. Since then, more than 1,000 people have been killed and 40,000 are believed to have been jailed, most of them supporters of Mr. Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood. A mystery explosion in a town close to the Libyan capital of Tripoli has killed at least 25 people after a dispute at a shop escalated. The blast took place in Garabouli after clashes between locals and militia fighters from the city of Misrata escalated. Officials initially said a munitions store had exploded, but one resident told the BBC a lorry loaded with fireworks had exploded. A BBC producer close to the scene in Garabouli said the coastal road was completely blocked and he could hear sounds of gunfire from a distance. A mix of armed civilians and local militias from the coastal town were manning checkpoints on the edge of the town along the coastal road. 
Cars trying to pass through were being searched, but it was not clear for what. Another Garibuli resident who spoke to the BBC said the entire affair had started after a fighter from a Misrata militia purchased items at a grocery store and allegedly refused to pay for them. The owner of the shop allegedly shot and killed him, and then there was a retaliatory attack against the store by the militia. The shop was burned down, and so was the owner's family home nearby. Armed residents protested over the attack and the presence of the militia in the town. It was then that a store nearby that had some depot, or lorry laden with fireworks for sale, exploded. The resident's account could not be independently verified or backed by a second source in Garabuli. Mohammed al Sayed, a local official, was quoted as saying by Reuters news agency, the number of casualties is rising and we are working hard to transfer them to nearest hospitals. An annual dog meat festival has begun in southern China amid widespread domestic and international opposition. About 10,000 dogs and cats are expected to be killed and eaten during the controversial 10-day festival in Yulin, China. Activists say the event is cruel, and this year a petition calling for it to be banned collected 11 million signatures. The local government says the festival does not have official backing, but is staged by private businesses. Residents and vendors in Yulin say that the animals are killed in a humane way, but critics say animals are killed brutally and publicly, and are sometimes beaten to death or cooked while still alive. Ahead of the festival, dogs are often kept in small cramped cages. Some photographs show animals wearing collars, suggesting they may have been stolen pets. Many dogs are transported from other cities in cramped lorries and unsanitary conditions, allowing diseases to spread easily. According to the campaign group Stop Yulin Forever, dogs are denied food and water for days during their trip. A poll published this week in state news agency Xinhua showed that 64% of people aged 16 to 50 would support a permanent end to the festival. Another 51.7%, including Yulin residents, wanted the dog meat trade banned completely, with 69.5% claiming to have never eaten dog meat. Qin Xiaona, director of the Capital Animal Welfare Association charity, one of many groups that commissioned the survey, said, it's embarrassing to us that the world wrongly believes that the brutal, cruel Yulin festival is part of Chinese culture. It isn't. Another activist group, the Humane Society International, is working to rescue dogs from local slaughterhouses. The HSI rescued 20 dogs from a slaughterhouse just a day ahead of the festival. The Yulin government has distanced itself from the gathering, saying that it does not officially organize the festival, and this year, media reports say officials have banned the slaughter of dogs in public. In anticipation of protests, they have also increased security on streets near well-known restaurants and markets. India's food watchdog has banned the use of a cancer-causing chemical in bakery products, a senior official said. The Food Safety Standards Authority of India took the decision after a study found residues of potassium bromate in 84% of bakery product samples collected in New Delhi, with the study reporting the chemical can cause cancer. The FSSAI sent a notification announcing the ban has been issued, and New Delhi-based Environmental Think Tank Center for Science and Environment, which conducted the study, has said it was expecting the government to also ban potassium iodate, another toxic chemical in bakery products. Pawan Kumar Agarwal, chief executive officer of the FSSAI, said, as far as potassium iodate is concerned, it has been referred to as a scientific panel. Both the chemicals are banned in many countries, but India continues to allow their use in bakeries. The CSC had collected 38 bread and other baked food samples from retail stores, bakeries, and fast food shops in Delhi for its study. This is Stefano from ABTV News, and keep watching American Bollywood TV.